lot to unpack, Rossi, but let's start with the 5-3. Um, what's the thinking behind that? What's the thing? Uh, yeah, I think sometimes um, there's games where you want to grow our team and sometimes there's games where uh, you desperately want to win. I think trying to win this game uh, would mean a lot in the rugby championships for the last two rounds. And, uh, you know, not to say you want your best players on the field, you want your best players in the group possibly. And uh, I think a guy like Salman Murat is very unlucky um, not to be in this team. So to unpack it, uh, the two loose forwards on the bench, you know, Peter Steff covers Lokfa, so we can probably put on the two loose forwards some way. We will probably give you almost a 6-2 a split um, momentum, if I say so, because Peter Steff is just a guy who can play 80 and 80 and 80. Uh, and we'll probably some way have to give him a rest. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, you know, obviously Kirtley is out. Uh, we don't forget the guys like Kane and what they've done for us before. Uh, my pimpy's got a, uh, his uh, wife's giving birth, and we don't want to keep him away from that. Uh, so that that's why Kane is in here, and we we all know uh, if you've not been long in the setup, then it takes a it takes a bit to get used to. But Kane knows as well. He has a 19-year-old boy coming to the onto the pitch against Australia away and, and had a magnificent game and, and is really playing well since. I think he's over all his injuries. Yeah, and we feel it's a, it's a game where uh, we definitely will have to match the speed to which they played last week. And we think having three backs on the bench will, will help in that regard. Um, I always caught, I always caught, caught stick last week. Does it, does it put pressure on you to announce him on Tuesday? Um, especially that situation with Eben. Then uh, Don, this week, I uh, said we should ask you, uh, reasoning behind <laughs> yeah. um, having that uh, selecting selection on Thursday. Yeah, the thing is, you know, don't always want to upset the media. We thought by uh, um, announcing it on, on, uh, on a Tuesday is, is, is uh, better for everybody, for us as a team, because we announce it 8 o'clock Mondays internally. And then if you don't, if you announce it on Tuesday, we felt all the speculations is uh, out of there, and you know people can write about uh, personal profiles and, and why we pick teams and give you a little bit more of an angle. And we've got nothing to hide. Uh, um, the Eben case, I really don't understand why people don't understand that. Um, it's uh, the guy was injured on Monday. He went for X-rays. They said it will probably be a ten-day week thing, uh, and then he just trained on a Monday, and that's the only reason why we did change the team on a Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, um, let's uh, for the specific team. Uh, let's announce it on Thursday. Then hopefully everybody's happy. Uh, and then next week we'll do our Tuesday thing again. Rossi, just maybe on Saturday the cheek. What exactly is the situation? Yeah, yeah, two options. Uh, again, I don't want to sound like a medical doctor because I am not. Um, yeah, it's it's yes, yeah, two options. The one is. Uh, it has to be reset. It's it's a nose fracture in here, and, and I don't want to name uh, bones and stuff. Maybe I pronounce it wrong. Uh, but uh, he can either get it uh, placed back now, then he's out for three weeks, or the doc says he can wait two weeks uh, and and then put it back in place. And obviously, um, the, the 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 bigness, the massive thing about this game, and not not just for the rugby championship, for us playing the All Blacks here. Uh, at the Cape Town Stadium is, is a big one and everybody wants to play there. I must say, I saw a few sad faces uh, when we announced the team on Monday. Uh, I think Marku must be dis uh, desperately disappointed, not because we would have played in Sia's place, uh, because we didn't go for 6-2, uh, you know, but the guys are handled it really well. I mean, Kourbis, Mani, uh, all the guys, uh, uh, Salman. Uh, um, I mean, if we win 6-2, uh, uh, someone would have been in uh, a mix. Even with 5 3, he thought of a lock and a loose forward. But he has the luxury of, 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 of Peter Steff. And you see, I, I see Zalman playing a lot of test matches for South Africa still. Uh, and I see him as a great captain. Uh, he's really somebody that brings something to the party. It's a calmness about him, uh, it's a precision thing about him, it's a really great work ethic. So uh, we've got a few guys that's unlucky. and. Just to answer, I know I answered the question in the long term, but uh, yeah, see, uh, uh, he himself wanted the option to play now and get it reset on in two weeks' time. Steven? Uh, Rassi, can you maybe expand a little bit, please, um, on the halfbacks and um, fullbacks? 
Yeah, again, you know, we don't want to, uh, Stephen, forget about guys like Jaden, what he's done for us. You know, Kubis had great runs for us. You know, he played in the World Cup, seven final. Uh, him and Mani, I think, was the starting uh, uh, off pack pairing there, or nine and ten there. Um, and then in the final, we went just with, with, who? with uh, um, what's his name? Faf and, and, and Andre, and we only had one guy on the bench. So, um, and, and we think uh, Grand deserves a start. Every time when he comes up, he definitely brings speed to the game. Uh, but so did us Quibus, and uh, the temptation was there again to start Jaden. And I have money to have that, uh, you know, that blitz speed uh, when the guys are a little bit tired. Uh, but uh, after thinking, we had a long discussion, after thinking about it, uh, let's see how, how deep into the game he can keep on delivering that before we bring Jaden on. <laughs> uh, Rusty, just uh, how tough has it been um, on Marnie the last few months? I mean, you're considering this is a guy who went to the, the World Cup as your, your starting <clears throat> number 10, and now he's very much you know, out of that pecking order. Um, yeah. How's he been the last few months? Uh, do you still see him playing Test Match Rugby yeah. in the future and the relationship with Sasha? And uh, how you see that unfolding with the Stormers? Sorry, quite a big question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, what they do at the Stormers is um, it's almost, I wouldn't say irrelevant. It's, uh, we will never tell a franchise coach where to play a guy. You know, it's his salary, it's his income, it's their livelihood, it's their <laughs> supporters' base, it's their franchise that must make money and win. So uh, we totally understand when they make decisions. It's even more interesting, you know, uh, when Damien Willems is fit, it's going to be Sasha, Damien Willems and Marnie. Now that's three great playmakers that you have in your team. So uh, uh, he's disappointed, but I think three years ago or two years ago, you would have been much more disappointed and you would have shown it. But he's not showing it, And uh, yeah, but he's competitive. All the guys are competitive, but we, we've got the theory that if we want to go to 2027, we must have a squad of 50. Uh, it will prolong a uh, senior player's career. Uh, definitely, if you play him a third match or second test match, and uh, then give a guy 40 minutes, and then so uh, it's not arrogant at all. But if we want guys to go to the next World Cup who's in their 32s, uh, then they can't play the next four test matches after the next four, uh, three years of test all the test matches just for us to win, and then they bugger it at the World Cup. You know, so money's there. Moni's probably one of the fittest guys, with the guys that extras on, on Wednesday. I, no, he's very positive, but it must be a thing a bit. Moving. Uh, Rasi, hope you well. Um, just the selection of Billy, ahead of Fassi. Um, just, I know you said you speak about unlucky guys. Fassi's another unlucky guy. Yeah, Fassi, Fassi, was, Fassi was brilliant, and I think we asked, asked him specifically to, to do well in, in the game, and the other things, just do what you do naturally. I mean, uh, I think his defence was rock solid. Uh, I think, you know, his kicking game was good. I think his eyeball game was good. Um, yeah, yeah, again, you know, we've got a guy that's on 97 caps um, playing with Andre. Uh, and I think there's 19 or 18 guys that was at the World Cup uh, in, in, this, in this group. So uh, I don't think we've been unfair on other guys, giving them exposure. Uh, and so we will keep on doing, you know. Uh, and it's nice to do it while you're winning. Uh, the moment you do it while you're losing, it almost looks like a knee-jerk reaction or, or a not planned thing. So we've got a little bit of a plan how we run around the next three years. And Fossey is definitely part of that plan. Rusty, the All Blacks have made a few changes for Saturday. What, what have you made of their team and how do you think they might play as a result of those changes? Yeah, look, uh, Sevu and, and, and Talia, <laughs> these guys, uh, I think the first try uh, Sevu scored against us with that cross kick in New Zealand. It's the first guy that I see that goosed, goosed uh, at Cheslin and, and uh, after a cross kick from, from uh, Richie. Uh, and yeah, he's just very dangerous. And Talia is the guy, physical, dangerous, legs are pumping all the time. Some of picks and go from the middle of a rock, you know. So who, um, Jerry worked hard on not to stop individuals, but for the guys to know individuals, because uh, if you think you're just going to tackle them, a uh, normal tackle, they'll get away. Uh, yeah, and then the, the loose forward. Uh, uh, I thought Caleb Clark, anyway, was, was fantastic, but he's injured, I think. And then, um, what's his name? Uh, Todd's son. Uh, 
Okay. Ethan, yeah, I know that well. Uh, uh, Ethan is he, unfortunately injured, so uh, you know, they had to make a change there. So I think we made five changes, and they made five changes. Yeah. Justin. Okay, this one to you. Um, just thinking about an opportunity to once again wear the Premier League shirt, you had a tough journey. Yeah, I would say it's been a tough couple of weeks, months with the, with the injury I had. But yeah, you know, once you're not here, you know, for, you know how special it is to be here. So you're very desperate to get back into it. So yeah, I think the mental toughness of it, just you know, want to be be back here again. So just pushing and doing all you can. You know, playing Curry Cup. You know, trying to get match fit and all that. So yeah, just yeah, doing everything I can to be back here. And yeah, this weekend I have an opportunity again. So yeah, very grateful for the opportunity and to show what I can do again. Yeah, uh, I think what the world knows about them, it's just, look, it's a magnificent, magnificent team and uh, I, maybe I used the wrong words in the post-match conference because it might have sounded a bit, uh, but I think they, they, were, they were very unlucky and uh, they obviously are not, we're not on a high there after the, the loss to Argentina, but then the next game they thrashed him. Uh, and to come over here is like us for daunting going over to Australia. For them coming here, it's for us going to New Zealand is daunting, you know, at or at Auckland and or, or any of the uh, stadiums there. And at 73 minutes, we were almost down and out. I remember, remember us playing a test match there where we were 38, 29, 15 points up at minute 75. And then they still scored three tries, not just two, three tries. And, uh, I think our guys has learned a little bit from that, that uh, the moment you think you have them, you don't have them. Uh, they've got a lot to offer, not just strategically, with their, their scrums are great, their malls are great. Uh, they do, certainly uh, matched us at the, the set phases very well. I thought the breakdown was a tight contest. Uh, the kicking game both sides, I think they got 30 kicks and we 27 kicks. Uh, Caleb was good in the air and they were accurate with the kicking game. And then they've got these individual guys who from nothing does something, you know. So it's a very difficult team uh, to coach against, to play against. And uh, uh, their greatness will always be around them just because uh, they've got really special players and coaches. Uh, Rassi, um, just, I know that these days you probably, when a guy's not in the team, it doesn't mean he's dropped. So no. That's your policy. Um, I'm just interested in, because I know obviously Ben Jason's not there this week, I think he came back to Providence for this week. Um, just how do you think he's tracking? I mean, how did he get? He was quite hard on himself after last week. Yeah, he shouldn't be. And I've told him we had a chat about that. Uh, you know, yeah, that, that's the thing about some test matches. New Zealand at Alice Park is difficult. Uh, they, they, the hype, the crowd. You feel crowd pressure both ways. I'm talking about the Springboks. Uh, when you're going well, it feels like they carry you over that trial. And when it's going not well, it's quiet. And you know, it gets to 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 some players. Um, uh, but he, look, I think he's going to play a lot of test matches for South Africa. He's definitely in the mix. He's definitely the next seven flanker that we think uh, can do it. Uh, but again, you know, um, we wanted to go for 5 3, and Ulrich really did well when he came on. He had a, had a great impact. And Ben Jason will probably play next week again. Rusty, uh, Chesson mentioned yesterday that he felt that past Springbok teams, maybe a few years ago, might not have come back from, from that deficit on Saturday. And that you do work behind the scenes with the players around you know, what, is, what is the plan from here when you are behind. Can you just expand a little bit on that? And have you yourself seen a mindset change in this team? Yeah, and I think when he says that, he included, included us as a group. Because <coughs> we've, we've been ahead or... But we've always been a team. I mean, New Zealand there, it was 12-3 once, uh, and, and we got back and beat them the first time, I think, in 2019 or something. Um, our New Zealand year, we've lost when we were 15 points up. So uh, our thing to try and stay on task, what, what we planned, shouldn't be influenced by emotions. Uh, and I think that's a big thing that to work on. Uh, and we almost didn't get it right on Saturday. But uh, yeah, uh, and if you look at this profile of this team, uh, I think New Zealand's average age was 29, and our average age was 30. So it's two experienced teams 
Uh, they had 48 test caps uh, per player, and we had 40, 43 last week. I think we pipped them this week with Willie that starts and Andre that starts. Um, but yeah, it, it's certainly something. Uh, we've got a session on Friday, what we call the what if session. Uh, and that's when we do the jersey hand over. We don't get like a past celebrities in or people to uh, come and hand over the jerseys. We, we uh, last week it was Tony Brown, you know, for him to coach against the All Blacks. Uh, and with all respect, it's, it's exciting and it's nerve wracking. Uh, and when he hands over the jerseys there, you know, he would give nothing away. He, he respect, he, he told, us, told us so much about the Haka. And it gives you a totally different uh, respect for the Haka. I'm talking about the players. Uh, he explained that it's it's an honour and what they are doing, yeah, it's a challenge. But as always, listen, we are doing the Haka for you as well. Uh, and, and that not help you face the Haka and enjoy it. It helps you to understand the Haka and what it means to them. Uh, and then when you take off your tracksuit, there's a different mindset before... Uh, when Tony coached, uh, hasn't coached us, because none of our coaches has ever known what the Haka really means for New Zealand. So, and it's not like it's secrets and he's uh, giving out game plans of them, because it, it's just uh, what it means and the emotional side and, and what we can take from that. So, yeah, we, di we discuss those things on Fridays when we hand over the jersey. Can you show? Um, Russell, what's one question for you, one question for Caden. Um, first, just Brief us how Sia went through training this week with the facial issue. And yeah. are there any misgivings over how he sustained the injury? And for you, Kayden, you play your rugby of course, but you from this part of the world. Just talk us through how excited you are to play Cape Town Stadium, most probably in front of a lot of friends and family. Yeah, you can go on that one. And, and again, it, uh, when we pick teams, it's... Uh, I'll answer your first question, sorry. Uh, when we pick teams, you know, you try to... Keep that in mind, and I, I'm thinking about Salman when I talk that, and I'm thinking about Marnie when I say that. You know, you it almost sometimes emotionally throws you to one side, and you but you must unemotionally pick a team and, and and see what is the best team for this specific game of what you want to achieve. Uh, and again, you know, uh, we it will is still injured. We could have moved Fassi to the wing probably, but uh, and he will manage, uh, but. Canaan was from here, exactly what you're saying. Uh, and I think that does make it special. When I played in Bloemfontein for the Cheetahs in Bloemfontein, although it's not the biggest city, but it was, was a much better, not much better. It was a very warm, uh, emotionally game for you, for, for you personally. So, yeah, Canaan, you can say it. I'll also answer that CR1 afterwards. Yeah, it's very special. Um, yeah, I tried to keep it on the low for, for the week, but now the team's out, so probably going to get some message for tickets. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> yeah, so, but no, very special. I mean, yeah, growing up in Cape Town, you know, this, this, this is the games you you uh, thinking about when you're growing up, you know, running in the street, you know, thinking you're facing the All Blacks. So, yeah, this is just a very, very special opportunity to play this weekend. Yeah, what a better place than Cape Town to do it. Uh, Sia's injury was obviously when Sam hit him. Uh, I'll never forget, sorry, I'm, I'm giving long answers, but I'll try to keep it uh, serious. Uh, he broke his neck uh, against us at Alice Park in a big win. And I went and visited him on the Monday morning because the New Zealand flew back. And I know we, I'll, I've had a jaw break twice in Sydney. I know how lonely it gets in a foreign country alone there. And you don't know how other medical aid work, how good the doctors are and those kind of things. So I went to visit him on a Monday. Uh, so we know each other a little bit closer than the normal All Blacks and you know, had a coffee and stuff with him there in the bed. And you could see the guy was going through a tough time because a neck injury is a, probably something that can stop your whole career or, you know, you can get, you know, what is uh, for lump, what is that we call it? Paralyzed, you're going to get paralyzed, you know, so uh, he was obviously going through some emotional stuff there. And to be honest with you, I don't think he did any of that on purpose. Uh, I think it, a yellow card might have been appropriate or penalty would, would have been appropriate. He came afterwards and I said to him, listen, we're not going to cite. Uh, we're not going to cite you on that because you have 12 hours to cite. And if the citing commissioner obviously pick it up and he thinks it meets a uh, red card uh, threshold, they call it. Uh, then they investigate it, but he, he, they went through everything. Uh, and, and that specific one didn't come up as a breaking the red card threshold. So, and, and he came and apologized and, 
Uh, when you look at the action, but I, I don't think he went for Sias head with his head because it was actually not the shoulders, actually the head hitting him on the nose. So, no, sometimes it goes for you and sometimes it goes against him. That poor guy was a red carded in the World Cup final. Uh, uh, wouldn't have been nice to get red carded again. And how did Sia get to training? Oh, Sia, uh, the question was to see on Sunday. Uh, after they did all the scans, and see, uh, will you be half hearted going into contact? You know, because your nose is sore and it's swelled up and the cheekbone is blown out. And, uh, and I, I said, no, well, let's go see you now. So that's why we didn't even man I want to mention it on Tuesday morning, because see, uh, I had to get through Monday. Uh, internally, we, we, we announced the team with him starting slash Marco. But then on Monday evening, he did all the contact sessions. Tuesday, he went right through. And today on Thursday, I can tell you, he's, uh, um, he didn't show any... The only problem would have been if he's hesitant. It can't break further. Uh, it, it has to be put back in place. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it might look like Quaha. Rashid, <laughs> 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 um, uh, to Gavin's point, your, your selections are often decided. Yeah, you, you have a very good idea what your team's going to look like weeks in advance. Um, but last week the attack didn't quite fire. Um, yeah, sort of in the first phase, playing you know, the tries all came sort of from balls and so on. Is, is Billy's inclusion a reaction to that, or was that always part of it? Uh, I think Willis calm hit in a big test match here. Um, uh, Andres calm hit in a big big test match here. Uh, look, Sasha, uh, what Sasha can do is Sasha reminds me a lot of Carlos Spencer, like 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 Moni does. He's uh, a very reliable goal kicker, Sasha. Andres is a very reliable goal kicker. Um, and if our attack is not working, we must remember who we're playing against. You know. Uh, it's been working very good up until, yeah, I think we in New Zealand are now on the same amount of tries in tournaments so far. I, I'm talking on a correction if you can look it up there. Uh, so, defence also makes it tough, you know, for uh, Barrett and Ioni and those guys who play there. Uh, they also know probably a lot about Tony Brown uh, and the way he sees the game. And, and, yeah, like they scored four tries, you know, one was... What's his name, Damien, giving it to them. Uh, with Barrett reading it really well after we did the same move three times in a row. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the mall try was uh, technically this Jasper who hasn't been part of us for a while and I thought he had a really good game. Uh, yeah, and, and the other tries were all organised New Zealand tries, you know, from turnovers are really difficult to defence against. So, but we uh, we worked really hard on that, and uh, I think Jerry is on top of that. Not to say they won't come here and score four tries, then we'll just have to score five. Uh, Rasha, can you talk about how the players are adapting to the new style of rugby that uh, Tony's bringing to the back line, and, 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 and the, the merits of having Kane on the wing with his height and the high ball? Yeah, I, might, I, I said it a few times, I'll say it again, uh, Caleb is not playing. Uh, but uh, Sevu is, uh, and, and, and what's his name, is, is pretty solid uh, under the high ball, and then when they get the ball, they they make, uh, you know, they, they cause damage. Um, uh, Felix Jones, is, uh, he laid the foundation there. Felix uh, got in the, hey, you must be able to pass 100 passes before gym. Uh, in the morning, you wake up. And, and I think he gave a, a baseline product, if I can put it, put it that way. To, to Tony to just work on uh, on mindset and running lines and uh, how to keep your feet a little bit, uh, how to get the pass away a little bit quicker. And I think there were three or four tries. Uh, I think Fashi just played on the inside, you know. Uh, I think the ball quickly kicked through after Sasha cross kick when he grabbed it. He could have just dived over and, and scored it there, chiseling it one on the other side. Uh, it could have been easily one or two or three tries more for us, but also for them. Uh, so I think it's good to do uh, two good defences uh, that test the attack. So you know, we, we seldom score three tries against the All Blacks, you know, so that's also not too bad. Um, but as he calls it, he's got a nice way. When Felix was here and Terry was here, you, you catch on to the Irish slang or the Irish 
twang, or what you want to call it. And the way he puts this, you know, is uh, uh, I want to call bullshit that we can't do this. And then he shows us, and oh, then we we trust him. And, and yeah, that's yeah, as he put it, he's, he's growing our attack. He wants to grow it, and, and I think the players are really, really enjoy it. Uh, last two English questions are now and John. Yeah, Asi, how much do we know about um, Wallace Satiti and uh, the scum of uh, Latimer? Just tell me, maybe give me a little bit of insight on him. Yeah, we've got Perry, uh, who's uh, Perry and, and, and Lindsay, who's our analyst. You know, their job is to uh, build profiles on every single player of the opposition. Um, my job is to follow them on Twitter to see, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, to see what they show, what, what they don't show. Uh, and then the players uh, do their homework, you know. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you ask him that question, you, he'll tell you exactly. Uh, um, so, yes, I know. And I know it's such a big test match for um, New Zealand if those other players that Razor wanted to pick. Uh, he knows something about their character and what they can do. Uh, when you see a player, you just see his actions. You, know, you don't, don't know how desperate he is, you know, what's his big match temperament, or will he go into his shell in the game, or will he stay chest out making plans. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to talk about the individual players here, but they obviously class. John? Uh, Rusty, sometimes it's hard to back up a big performance after a big win. Yeah. Has been a big uh, talking point this week after what happened? You had the World Cup after you guys beat France, it was a little bit in depth. Ireland series, do you work the same level the next week? Has it been a big talking point? Yeah, it is definitely, you're spot on, it's, it's, it's a fact. Uh, but again, you know, you play Ireland number two team in the world, everybody says they must be number one, you drew the series. Um, with a drop goal in the last minute. Uh, so if you missed it, was the guys up for the game? Yes, we were up for the game. Uh, and we would have won it. So we tried to make the decisions non-emotional and go and break it down to departments and see how we go. Uh, but certainly my thinking and the coaches and the you know, medical team and the SNC team is to, some guys when you get to a certain age you feel, I am ready for this test match, this next test match. But, uh, we all lose hair and we all get grey. You know, you, you, nobody gets faster as they get older. Uh, and, and sometimes that player tells himself, I'm ready. Uh, and that's also one of the reasons why we mix up all the time. To try and see, can we get over that hurdle of not backing it up? You know, um, and, and that's one of the reasons why we made five changes. Because we certainly stick with some players uh, and they themselves really think they're up for the game and then in the match the first five minutes they get a shock. Uh, and that's when you get older, you know. Um, I think that's part of the reason. And I've, we've explained it to the players and said, listen, we want to see this now. Uh, it's going to be very tough to beat New Zealand in Cape Town. There's no altitude here. Uh, you know, say they enjoy it here. They, they really like to come here. But we love it. And we like to come here, and we play here many times, and I've played here. Um, so yes, I, I, I think we will be up for the game and not uh, get catch out sleeping. You know.